I can't think of a more unexpectedly complex character than Heinz Doofenshmirtz. I mean, his entire persona is a riff on the evil scientist trope, but there's so much more here, whether it be his healthy divorce or his incredibly complicated relationship with his daughter. Recently, we took a look at what made Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz the best animated father and how his relationship with his daughter shaped his career as he ultimately walked away from a life of villainy after a heart-to-heart -heart with Vanessa in the Phineas and Ferb series finale. The eccentric lab coat wearing genius is not only not so bad a dad, he's not that bad of a guy. Look past the mildly concerning schemes and again his wardrobe and you'll find a man with a lot of love to give, under the misguided impression that he has to pit himself against the world. I'm glad a little community service as a teacher is what took for him to atone for his actions, which in all honesty is probably a blessing in disguise for the students, since weirdly it seems like a lot of people have had really mean science teachers at any point K through 12. Like seriously, it even comes up when you type it in on Google. Who heard us? But although Doof is our lovable goofball, you gotta admit you can't help but wonder, what if he was a successful supervillain? What if Heinz wasn't the best cartoon dad, but instead one of the best cartoon villains? On Disney Channel, at least. I see you all in the comments. Aku, Azula, Arnold's weird cousin, who oddly enough debuted in the episode titled Weird Cousin. Well, lucky for you, dear viewer, the question is answered in the 2011 direct-to-television movie Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension, an insane adventure where Phineas and Ferb wind up helping Doofenshmirtz repair his other dimensioninator, opening a gateway to the titular second dimension. However, they're horrified to find this world in a much bleaker state than their own, or dare I say bleaker tri-state, as the Doofenshmirtz in this dimension has fulfilled his sick mission and conquered the area as his domain. And when you really take a look at the second dimension Doof, it's a wild ride on its own, arguably more insane than our Doof. So guys, I'm Nemo, and today let's run down this evil second dimension Doof, see how he differs from our lovable mad scientist as a legitimate supervillain, and even how his family survived severely contrast from the Vanessa and Charlene that we know and love. Get comfy, you'll be here for a hot second. The best place to start with this Doofenshmirtz is the juiciest part of every supervillain, the origin story. Doof Prime has a comical barrage of tragic backstories throughout his life, from his parents failing to show up to his own birth, to being reduced to the family lawn gnome, and rejected as a child worth loving, let alone a human being worth respecting. It's very sad. Even saying it out loud now, I mean, woof. So much about Doofenshmirtz stems from his pain from the past, but nothing pushed him over the the edge and forced him to rise to a truly evil dictator, if anything it just led to him sort of trying to be one. So what changed in this dimension? The straw that broke the oddly shaped camel's back? Well if you remember, our Doofenshmirtz suffered a great loss in losing his childhood friend Balloonie the Balloon, creatively named. It blew away tragically in the wind, but ended up in space with aliens, that's a whole other rabbit hole. But still, if there's one thing these two counterparts share, it has to be this great loss of a best friend. But things were a little different for the second dimension Heinz. Instead of the childhood full of cold shoulders and colder streets, this doof actually had a pretty well-rounded childhood. He seems to lack the slew of trauma that plagues First Dimension Hines. Now, we're currently unaware of the relationship with his family, such as Second Dimension's brother Roger. We just know that whatever that situation was, they actually got along pretty well, in contrast to our Hines. Still, Second Dimension doof did suffer a great loss in the form of a toy train named Choo Choo. And... Well, that's it. He had a toy train, he really liked it, it vanished at some point in his childhood, poof, gone. And somehow, that's all it took to drive this doof off the deep end, instilling so much anger, hate, and vengeance that he was transformed into a pure evil supervillain. Also, at some point, he lost an eye in an accident. He still keeps it in a sack. He has to wear an eye patch. There are so many questions I'm sure we're not gonna get answers to. I mean, you're telling me he can't replace it with a new one? How do the logistics of fake eyes work? I have no idea. Obviously, this is wild. Our doof and so much and came out a much stronger and nurturing human as a result. But this Doofenshmirtz, who wasn't too pressed about losing his eye, snaps from losing one toy in his childhood. And it wasn't even anything cool. It was a train. Yet, in a way, it explains why this Doof is innately more driven than the goofball we know. Everything thrown at our Doofenshmirtz was out of his control and thus he had to accept the loss at face value and move on. Even with Balloony, there was absolutely no way he could retrieve him. But with losing a toy, say a toy train, typically we misplace it. The object remains tangible and its fate can still fall in our hands. There's always a little ounce of hope that whatever loss can be found, no matter what the situation is. So for the second dimension doof, I imagine he searched for the train every single day, turning his house upside down. This man turned to science and still couldn't find the stupid train toy, and he wasn't going to settle for any less. What drove him insane and to a life of villainy was that something that should have been in his control, but was out of his control. And so, to comp 
compensate, he decided he'd just need control of everything and everyone else, leading to the evil dictator we see on television. After that, much of Second Dimension Doof's story follows the emotions of our Doofenshmirtz. He aspires to conquer the tri-state area, marries Charlene Doofenshmirtz, who gives birth to Vanessa, and they become one big evil family. It's kind of, it's kind of adorable. You know, not something you'd see on Hallmark, but still. Make no mistake, the similarities with that family ended the names, but we'll shed light on that in a second. The plan that deviates Second Dimension Doof is his approach to conquering the tri-state area, immediately breaking out the big guns with his spin on Norm, Doof's robot son, with Norm bots created and distributed by Doofenshmirtz himself. The Norm bots were born as an army meant to obey one sole purpose, control the tri-state area and dispose of anybody who stands in their way. That's dark. And surprise, surprise, it was a huge success. The Second Dimension tri-state area was ruled with an iron grip, and with that, the differences between our lovable mad scientist and the pure evil Doofenshmirtz begin to show. Is there anything more important in life than family? Even an evil scientist dictator from the second dimension can have a great family relationship. I think that's inspiring. I'm choosing to look at that positively. Doofenshmirtz's family mainly consists of Charlene, his ex-wife, and Vanessa, his daughter. Now in our dimension, Doofenshmirtz and Charlene divorced. As tragic as it is, they seem to have a good relationship despite it, and as we detailed in a super long video, his relationship with Vanessa isn't pretty complicated. But unlike our first dimension Charlene, second dimension Charlene staged her emotional disconnect with Doofenshmirtz, as they only divorced for the financial benefits. Evil or genius? I don't know. Never heard of anybody being better off financially because of a divorce. Whereas Charlene and Heinz weren't the greatest match in the first dimension, Charlene being the first person to see that Heinz isn't even evil, their second dimension counterparts are on the same dangerously high level of evil. Charlene also being on her robotic grind, transforming OWCA agents into cyborg minions. Charlene also acts as the main antagonist for the movie's sequel episode, Tales from the Resistance, Back to the Second Dimension. If there's one thing that they don't exactly see eye to eye on, it's Second Dimension Doof's weird obsession with Choo Choo. And I'm gonna be frank, I don't blame her in the slightest. It's weird, dude. Trains are, are boring. It's literally like one train. Despite this, they appear to be madly in love. Aw, they even have their own song about how their divorce was a lie and they love each other. I need to like spontaneously sing more. It seems to work out for like everyone in this show. So despite being divorced, his relationship with Charlene is better than ever in this evil dimension. But I think that comes at a loss. They work so well together because they're both so evil. And I don't think that's a good bedrock for a relationship. I'm no therapist. Doesn't really seem like a healthy love language, but hey, I digress. But how does Second Dimension Doof's relationship with Vanessa fare? I would argue that our Doofenshmirtz's relationship with Vanessa is his bread and butter. Second Dimension Doof isn't terrible to his daughter, but their relationship is certainly a far cry from the iconic father-daughter dynamic of their primes. Second Dimension Doof looks out for his daughter, expresses the same disappointment that Vanessa seemingly has a disinterest in villainy, but is nowhere near as invested or involved, and that's the crucial part. He's only concerned about making sure that she has a good, or rather bad, head on her shoulders, and making their relationship seem strong enough to her mother. At one point, actually asking Vanessa if she could tell Charlene that she had a good time. I mean, that is some manipulative stuff. I know he's an evil dictator, I shouldn't be surprised, but it doesn't give you an excuse to be a bad dad. Overall, I would say that their relationship is pretty messy. This Heinz banishes anybody that Vanessa dates, as initially displayed with a deleted scene from across the second dimension, that features Second Dimension Vanessa's cameo, but this concept is properly explored as a full-out joke in Tales from the Resistance. I get the idea of a dad wanting to control who his daughter dates, but I'm willing to hedge my bets and say that this is a step too far. I think it goes down to the fact that he's just an evil dictator. Our doof is humble and understanding with his daughter. He accepts when he makes mistakes and he just wants her to be happy. The biggest and strongest part about the relationship is Doofenshmirtz's willingness to sacrifice for his daughter and to always listen to her. Second Dimension Doof is an evil dictator who doesn't listen to anybody and controls every single aspect of his life. He even found a way to monetize his divorce. He's not very empathetic, is what I'm trying to say. And clearly this control freak sort of personality that he has is not working when it comes to raising a daughter. It just doesn't. So even if this Doofenshmirtz is more successful being a villain, we can rest assured knowing that our Doof is better at being a dad. So what does this all mean? And where do these two Doofs stand? Well, Second Dimension Doof ultimately reunites with Choo Choo at the end of the TV movie, regressing into the same level of competence and villainy as our Doofenshmirtz. Unfortunately, he's also sent to prison, which is a punishment that not even our Doofenshmirtz gets. Second Dimension Vanessa rescues her parents and enables their escape, so she may have the same evil blood coursing through her veins, but don't worry about it. That'll come out years down the line. It'll come out in the wash. Just put her through therapy. She'll be okay. Ultimately, drive, weird fixations, and an overall paradox is what was needed to ignite Doof's true potential. And his true potential is crazy powerful and crazy scary. I mean, this man really is a genius. However, once he recovered his toy and he regained control of the one thing he loved the most, his impact
ambition and skewed worldview faded away instantly, becoming the normal skewed worldview of the sweeter but kinder lame hinds. It seems like all of Doof's insane intellectual skills and incredible raw potential and power has won Achilles' heel. It's always rooted in emotion. He could be an absolute dictator and have taken over the entire tri-state area with evil robots and have an eye patch, but at the end of the day, it's all rooted on an emotional experience, one that, if solved, completely untangles that evilness. I think it's interesting that we get to take a look at another Doofenshmirtz because we get to analyze his character even more. And at the end of the day, even as an evil dictator, he's still pretty lovable. And I think that's a powerful note to end on. But as always, I want to know what you guys think about this whole concept. Do you like Second Dimension Doof? Do you think we made some valid points assessing his character here? Or do you disagree with them? Let us know in those comments down below. Tweet to us around table vids or even me at Stretcher Nemo. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more incredible cartoon content. As always, guys, I'm Nemo. This is Doofenshmirtz Dissect Video, and I will see you next time. Peace.